If you've been feeling in a bit of a rut or a slump recently, struggling for motivation, girl, let me tell you, you are not the only one. This video is hopefully gonna motivate you to exit your lazy girl era and enter your productive girl era. My tips and tricks on how to feel confident, stay disciplined and stick to those healthy habits. I want you to think about that one big scary dream that you want really badly but just have not gotten around to doing. We are now coming into spring. It means like we're past quarter one of the year and if you've struggled with getting on track with all those new year goals that you set yourself in January, then hopefully this video helps you out because you got this. I've made a good few videos all about productivity, my productivity tips, but I haven't ever really spoken about the power of discipline. And when I talk about discipline, I don't mean just in relation to work, I mean in relation to yourself, your healthy habits, how you go about your day to day. Tip one, let's get that mindset right. You need to remember that discipline is actually the ultimate form of self-care. Following through with things that you actually promised yourself. To me, that's a form of self-love. I think we hear all the time that self-care looks like, oh no, just give up, have a bath, treat yourself. But truly, there is also such a great feeling in getting through a deadline, showing to yourself that you can do it, proving to yourself that you are actually hardworking and stop guilting yourself into doing a task. No wonder we make things feel like such high effort before we even start them. And I talk a lot about like self-care on this channel, right? I think it is important to recognize the difference between laziness and exhaustion. If you are burnt out, that is a different thing. By embracing discipline, you're not just shaping your actions, but you're actually shaping your character. I think it is important to tell yourself that you are worthy, that you are good enough, even when it's challenging, even when it's uncomfortable. Tell me if this is you, because I'm sure some of you relate and I know this is me. I will look at someone who is a high achiever, they're really successful, living my quote unquote dream life, okay? Or they have something that I really want. Why is it we usually jump to the negative associations, right? Like, oh, they're just really lucky or they're really hardworking and I couldn't do that. You basically just assume like that could never happen for you. I think it's important to ask yourself, like, are you actually afraid of the hard work or are you afraid of failing publicly? You'd rather not start something because of the risk of people watching you fail at that new thing. No wonder, like we live in an age where it is so hard to try a new thing, to start a new thing. And I think it's important to remember like those people that you look up to managed to overlook that. They were brave enough. Look at the most successful, rich people on this planet. We hear about the stories of success, but a lot of the time we forget to tell the story of their failures. Working past failure causes discipline. So get comfortable with the possibility of failing. Okay, step two for exiting your lazy girl era, literally do something for your new era. I genuinely think like if you feel like you're in a rut, let's physically freshen things up. Start by literally looking at your environment. Look at the habits that don't serve you. I think it's important to remember that like we are all addicted to fast dopamine. That's why our brains love a bit of doom scrolling so much. You're like, quick hit of dopamine kind of makes it harder honestly to be disciplined so maybe you need like a digital detox maybe you need to get off instagram maybe you need to challenge yourself staying off social media for a couple days unfollow things that like take a lot of your energy i think it's crazy actually for me how a messy environment if my home is messy if there's laundry everywhere which happens a lot so when my flat is a mess and i work from home a lot then my brain is also a mess. Now, coming into spring, it is obviously the perfect time for spring clean. Saying that, you do not need to go and clean your home top to bottom, but maybe it is decluttering a closet or a drawer that you have been putting off for ages. Let's talk about environment design and changes you can make to help yourself stop procrastinating because obviously we're talking about trying to be a little bit less lazy and I feel like a lot of us procrastination is one of those obstacles that we face every single day. I've noticed recently that when I'm working at my desk with my laptop, I always have my phone right next to my laptop. Paranoia that I'm gonna miss something important. Oh, literally put my phone in another room. That way I can concentrate a lot better. Or something I love doing is opening up Spotify and just playing through like a soundtrack. Something that I know puts me into concentration mode and I associate that sound and everything with, okay, I need to get some work done. And then I find I'm just gonna go my phone less. It's that sensory anchoring. So like creating sensory cues that are associated with productive behaviors. And again, we're not just talking about work here. So if you're somebody who 
really wants to get in the habit of working out, be that person who has a yoga mat out. Another tip is maybe think of this as more of like a journaling exercise, but what does your most productive self look like? I want you to get excited about this new reinvented version of you. What's your dream routine like? Write out your dream morning routine, your dream evening routine. Don't make these things unrealistic. You know you don't have time for it. You know you're not gonna dedicate time to. It could be, say for example, that you really wanna be someone who stops scrolling first thing every single day. Implement three little habits that you do instead so that your brain just goes, okay, we're gonna go do those first thing. It could be as simple as like, okay, first thing I'm gonna do, brush my teeth, I'm gonna take my vitamins, I'm gonna hydrate myself, have some water and do a two minute journal exercise. I don't know, like something really realistic. I know a lot of people love putting together like a vision board. Maybe it has all the new habits you wanna start if you wanna get into Pilates, if you if you wanna get into reading, if you wanna be better at home cooked meals, drinking enough water every day, whatever. Like just have fun with it, make it pretty. Another tip that really helped me, and honestly I catch myself still doing this all the time is thinking way too long term and I feel like this can either go one of two ways where your brain goes like okay well I have like the whole year to do that so I'm sure it'll happen at some point and you don't and I don't strategize my goals or like realistic steps to get there and then before you know it like the year is over and you did not come close to meeting that for me last year it was like I want to really get into the gym I wanna see a physical difference. I wanna feel a difference. Be someone who is actually in the gym like four times a week, every week. I finally got to a place last year where I was a lot more consistent. I wasn't necessarily like training all that hard. And I think it's cause I gave myself a way to wish washy goal of like, just be better at the gym. Whereas this year, like I took little steps. I started a program. Okay, also when it comes to goals and trying to change ourselves, it is so easy to go, oh, well I've, no idea where to start with that. If you tell yourself like, for example, you wanna hit 100K on YouTube this year, that sounds like a really hard goal. Or maybe you wanna get like a first in your degree this year if you're a student. Saying it out loud like that, it's like this objectively hard thing to do. And it's gonna be hard work and it's gonna take up a lot of time. And frankly, it can be overwhelming. Listen, accept that perfection is often the enemy of progress, waiting for the perfect conditions to start a task. Instead, embrace imperfect action and learn as you go. Break it up into manageable tasks. You're not gonna write that essay that gets you a first today, but what can you do today to help you get there? Also, the sense of accomplishment for completing small little tasks can actually really motivate us and help us to keep going. I think it is so important to look at how you structure your day. Next tip is to surround yourself with people who lift you up, who maybe help you achieve goals, who help you be more productive. I don't know, the power of accountability is crazy. <laughs> you could pair it with a friend or you could join a group if there's something that you really want to get into. Say it's like you really want to start reading, join a reading group or start a little challenge with your friend where if you let that person down and you don't finish that book within two weeks, like you're gonna let them down. You can't then go talk about it, whatever. Knowing that someone is aware of your goals can definitely push you sometimes. I wanna talk about reward and how reward is okay. I'm not talking about necessarily if you manage to finish some really big project and you wanna treat yourself to like this nice bag. I'm talking about, and this is maybe more for my lazy girls. For example, today, I really wanna have an evening where I just kind of become a couch potato and watch Netflix. But I'm gonna tell myself like, I have to finish editing this thing or I have to finish this deadline before I can do that. And then that is my reward. I have that sense of reward. And it also means like that downtime feels a lot less like procrastination and therefore I do actually reset. I actually enjoy. It can also go the other way. You can essentially give yourself a consequence if you don't get something finished on time. For me, in the early stage, of trying to work out a bit more, I would tell myself, okay, if I manage to go to the gym three to four times every single week for a month, then I can treat myself to that new Gymshark set that I've been eyeing up. I'm literally wearing one of their hoodies right now. Like I probably wear something of Gymshark every single day. I wanna show you guys the set that I got myself. I think at the end of February, I got this as just a little reward to myself for being consistent at the gym. I'm actually working with Gymshark on this next part of the video, which always feels like such a pinch me moment because I am a huge fan of the brand. I've been wearing Gymshark for years because in my opinion with Gymshark, there's no hit or miss. Like all of their pieces are amazing quality. All of their pieces are 
actually workout friendly. I'm talking like squat proof. Sure, you look cute in them, but they're not just about looking cute. These pieces that have actually been designed to help you with your workout and help you feel good whilst you're doing your workout. So yeah, this set is from their Lift Contour Seamless range. I got this matching set in this mild gray color. I'm obsessed with the scrunch design of these on the bottom, so flattering. And then I wanna talk about one of my favorite ranges, the Gymshark Do, their Adapt Fleck collection. So I have this matching set here. I don't know why, like I just feel my best when I'm wearing all black in the gym. I feel like it makes me feel like a baddie. And oh my word, a moment for these leggings. Feels like they're actually supporting you without compressing you too much. And then I wear this halter neck all the time. You guys wanna treat yourself to a new Gymshark set. Maybe you're getting started in the gym, you need a little bit of motivation. I've got to, Gymshark have actually given me an exclusive code for you guys. So if you use the code Becca W, it will get you 10% off. I'll also leave the link in the description. Another tip I have, and this one might seem kind of random, but I genuinely have found it makes such a difference. And that is stop with the habits that aren't actually serving you. Just following other people's routines. I think you need to get the idea out of your head that if you're not getting up at 6 a.m. and going to the gym, then you're not productive, that you are lazy. If you're getting up at nine, then that makes you lazy. We are so like hustle and grind obsessed right now. And sometimes I think you need to like silence all of that because it's gonna make you not feel good enough and genuinely think about what does the perfect day look like to you? Because it probably isn't like jam packing your schedule from 6 a.m. If getting up at 6 a.m. makes you feel horrendous and low energy for the rest of the day, that is counterproductive. Next up, and I, I feel like this one might be a little controversial, so please don't take it the wrong way. We live in a time where we are really good at listening to our problems, which absolutely, there is a good side to that. But sometimes I think it's misinterpreted. Understanding that being uncomfortable is not always a bad thing and that isn't necessarily bad for you. Being pushed out of your comfort zone is actually one of the best ways to see growth and to really have a better relationship with yourself. We talk a lot about visualization and manifestation. I think sometimes we get a little too caught up in it. Almost like we're trying to find shortcuts with things. When you reach success in something or get something that you want, that feeling that you worked really hard for it is an amazing feeling. Having meaning behind it, having purpose behind it. Trust me, it's fun buying the new flashy bag or something you once thought you could never afford. I'll tell you what completely trumps that and that's new an improved relationship that you have with yourself, that self-belief that you are worthy, that you are capable of hard work, and that you are capable of making your dreams reality. But yeah, that was my take on how to truly exit your lazy girl era. Look at that vision board, girl. Look at the goals that you set for yourself at the start of this year. You can make them happen. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. I've been enjoying making these sort of like sit down, self-development videos. I hope you guys love them too. Send you guys all my love as always, and I'll see you in the next video.